السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحابته ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله all of the guests here tonight I actually asked Imam Zaid to take his time and uh, I donated my time to him because most of the people are from the area we got some requests one of them was please ask uh, Hamza not to shorten his speech as uh, some of us came here tonight we wanted to hear so uh, inshallah I'll try to um, say something about the original topic that I had in mind which is called heaven and earth understanding uh, Allah's law and order but before I do that I want to say a few things one uh, this uh, is from the poor adab or the poor courtesy of a son to speak in the presence of his father and for a student to teach in presence uh, of his teacher and I have more than one teacher here in this uh, uh, hall and uh, I have my spiritual fathers here and my material father here and uh, I I wouldn't even want to open my uh, mouth in front of uh, uh, people like Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya. Um, because if people knew what he knew, and I think much of what he knows is veiled from us uh, for a protection for him, but if people knew what he knew, uh, they uh, wouldn't leave him for a moment during the entire time he was here. And I make no exaggeration in that statement. Uh, because these people are the hujjah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his earth, they're the proof of God uh, in his earth. And also I want to say, uh, if people are tired, uh, that this shaykh out of his most esteemed courtesy, and also Dr. Khalid al-Madkur who came from Kuwait, these men flew on airplanes uh, over 20 hour journey to be with us. And uh, he's coming and I know that they're exhausted and they came just out of the courtesy of being here because we have nothing to offer them. In terms of our, uh, what, what we have, we have nothing to offer them. They have uh, only t uh, things to offer us. And that's not in any way an exaggeration. And Allah knows the truth of that. Uh, I want to say uh, also that uh, Sheikh Nidham Adi Aqoubi, who's come to be with us, Dr. Amr Abdullah Farooq, Sheikh Tawfiq, and Sheikh Abdullah Al Qadi, and many, many other people, uh, Abdul Azim Sanders, all of these people, and our sister, who is a Mujahida. Uh, and, and I told earlier Sheikh Tawfiq, he was telling me that the women in America, it seems more are becoming. Uh, Muslim than the men. I said, that's true. And he said, it's because of the difficulties that the women in America have. I said, no, it's because women now are much better than men. And I said that we have women doing our jihad. We're supposed to be protecting them. And they're out there demanding the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth. And the men are sitting at home eating baklava and drinking coffee. And this is a sign of the times. It's just a sign of the times. Maryam in Hebrew uh, means the woman worth two men. Maryam alayhi salam is mentioned in the Quran. She's the only woman in the Quran mentioned by name. She's the only woman mentioned by name. She, her name in Hebrew means the one worth two men. Because all a man has to offer a woman is child and provision. And she, Allah gave her child and Allah gave her provision. She needed no man. And so we have uh, women now that are uh, they're, uh, worth uh, two or ten of the men walking around on this planet. We all should be ashamed of ourselves. And that's the, God's, uh, that's, that's the God honest truth. The men, we should be ashamed of ourselves. And, and, uh, and that, that is in no way an exaggeration. Uh, the idea of heavens and earth and بعد إذن السادة العلماء الأجلاء والله بعد إذنكم the the thing that I, I want to talk about and I'll do this as brief as I can we are living in a time when the stars have been put out قُمِسَتَ النُّجُمْ People haven't seen the stars in San Francisco Bay Area for many, many decades. Some of them have forgotten that they even exist. 
People haven't looked up to the heavens for a long time. They haven't raised their heads up to the heavens. And this is an age like the cow who spends his life grazing on the ground, never raising his head above the, the grass of the earth, never realizing that there's a universe above him, just as there is an earth below him. If you look in the Qur'an, the first command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives in his book in Surah Al-Baqarah, and this is the command to all of humanity, Ya ayyuhal nas, u'budu rabbakum. O oh, humanity, worship your Lord. Worship your Lord. This is the first command that comes in the entire Qur'an. Worship your Lord. Alladhi khalaqakum. Who created you from nothing? He created, وَالَّذِينَ مِن قَبْلِكُمْ And those who came before you, لَعَلُّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In order that you might ward off harm from your own souls. In order that you might ward off harm that you bring upon yourselves. الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشًا He made for you the earth a bed. فَخْرُ الدِّينَ الرَّازِي رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ says that a bed in order to be comfortable is neither too hard nor is it too soft. That Allah did not make the majority of the earth water, nor did He make it sand. But He made it earth which is a middle, it is a middle material in order for us to live comfortably on this earth. In order for us to live comfortably on this earth. Allah has given us this earth as a bed, as a bed to find repose in our lives. And then He says, وَالسَّمَاءَ بِنَاءً And He made the heaven a canopy above you. Allah has made the heavens a canopy. He built it over you. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He made the heavens. جَعَلْنَا السَّمَاءَ سَقْفًا مَحْفُوظًا We made the heaven a protective canopy, a protective barrier. And now we know some of the meanings, the outward meanings of this verse in the Quran, in which we now know about solar flares. We know about the Van Allen belts. We know the fact that every 11 years, the entire planet could be wiped out because of the solar flares that are igniting from the sun. 92 million miles away, according to the uh, scholars of astronomy, it sends off massive solar winds. And we have these incredible uh, belts, called Van Allen belts, that are protecting the earth from this radioactive harm. This is what our Lord has given us. We live in a protected environment. We live in a place in which we feel safe and secure, walking upon it. And this is what Allah says that He has sent down, He built, created this sky over you, and He sent down water from the heavens. This is not just the material water that brings earth to life, but this is the spiritual water that Allah has sent down to nourish the souls. The word in Arabic for uh, to tell, riwaya. In Arabic comes from a root word which means to, to give a thirst quenching drink. In other words, riwayah itself is something that quenches your thirst. And Allah has given us Ahsan al qisas to quench our spiritual thirst. So just as we have a bodily thirst, we have a thirst in the soul, and that is to understand the truth. Even the Greek Aristotle said, All men wish to know. All men wish to know. It is the desire of the human being to have knowledge. And this is the gift of this water. And then he says, فَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ رِزْقًا لَكُمْ And then he brought forth fruit as provision for you. This is not just the outward fruits that we take off the trees. It is the fruits of revelation. It is a provision from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have the fruits of revelation don't place idols next to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't place rivals up to Allah. And you are aware of what you're doing. Now I just want to say uh, that there is a verse in the Quran. If you look after the first command, Allah tells us about the heavens and the earth. Because this is what we find ourselves in. We are this barzakh. The human being is an interspace between the heavens and the earth. He was placed and she was placed upon the earth to represent something great. To represent something great, which is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the ability in the human heart to come to know one's Lord. And there is nothing greater 
There is nothing more important. There is nothing more immediate than our necessity of realizing why we are here, why we've been placed on the earth, and what we have to do while we tarry here for this short time. We have these few moments that accumulate to be a lifetime. They pass, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, كَلَّمْحٍ بِالْبَصَرِ Like the glance of an eye, when they're asked, how long did you tarry on the earth in the next world? People say, يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمٍ A day or part of a day. This is all we're doing here. We have one day. We have one day just as the people before us had a day. Imam al-Ghazali had his day. Imam ibn Rajab al-Hanbali had his day. Salahuddin al-Ayyubi had his day. Khadija al-Kubra had her day. All of these great people radiallahu anhum, they had their day and now we have our day. We've been given our day. What will we do with our day? What will we do? Will we be people that rise up to the greatness of what human beings are or will we descend to the lowest of the low? This is the question. Will we people that elevate ourselves through submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or will we be people that abase ourselves through submission to the lowest aspects of our nafs, of hawa, of shaitan, of dunya, of the ego, of our own caprice and desire, of the demonic elements in society calling us away from our higher selves and from this ephemeral illusion we find ourselves in called dunya, the lowest portion of the world. In the Quran Allah says, وَأَلْقَ فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَا أَن تَمِيدَ بِكُمْ Allah has placed firmly, rooted in this earth, mountains in order that the earth might not shake while you're on it. He has placed mountains here. Don't think that these are simply the mountains that we see out there. Mount Shasta, Mount McKinley, Jebel Uhud. This is not only the only type of mountain. We have mountains that have hearts that surpass in their elevation the highest mountains on this planet. And this is the scholars and the people who guide us. These are the mountains that Allah has given us. And He's given us these mountains in order to stop the earth from shaking with corruption, from shaking with deviation, from shaking with all of those things that remove the human being from the purpose and the intention behind which he was and she was created. These are the mountains that Allah has given us to prevent the earth from shaking. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنْهَارًا وَأَنْهَارًا Where do the rivers flow from? They flow from the mountains. This is the sustenance that comes from the human hearts. Because there's no end to this river of knowledge in every age that Allah has given humanity. And then He says, وَسُبُلًا And paths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us paths to follow. In other words, there are diverse understandings. There are diverse comprehensions. There are different ways of knowing. There's different ways of going. But all of those ways lead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they're based on the guidance of these mountains that Allah has placed in our paths and has given us as hallmarks, as milestones. And then He says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ in order that you might be guided. Don't think that this guidance is simply the guidance of knowing where you're going on these material roads. This is guidance of knowing where your heart is going, on the path that your heart is following to your Lord, because this is the primary guidance that Allah has given us, and everything else is a metaphor. إِنَّمَا الْكَوْنُ مَعَانٍ قَائِمَةٌ بِالصُّوَرِ كُلُّ مَنْ يُدْرِكُ هَذَا كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلَ الْعِبَرِ these are only meanings set up in images. And everyone who understands and comprehends this, these are from the people of Ibar, from the people of discernment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَلَمَاتٍ And these signs we have given you, وَبِالنَّجْمِهُمْ يَهْتَدُونَ These signs that Allah has given us, and by the star they are guided. وَالنَّجْمِ إِذَا هَوَى who is the star? Who is the star of this whole universe? Who is the qutub of this universe? وَبِالنَّجْمِهُمْ يَهْدُرُونَ وَالنَّجْمِ إِذَا هَوَى According to some of our Mufassirin, one of the isharat, and we don't 
in any way deny like Sidi Ahmed Zarruq radiallahu says that an ishara is taken as a, a symbolic understanding of the Qur'an without negating its outward meaning. Because we're not batiniyya. These are isharat and we're not saying that this is the only meaning. Allah has given multiple meanings in His book. But, وَالنَّجْمِ إِذَا هَوَى Allah has sworn by the star. And according to our mufassirun, the star was the Prophet Muhammad wasallam in Mecca. He was the star of Quraysh. He was their najm. He was Al-Ameen. He was a Sadiq Al-Ameen. He was the Hashemite who was told about in the Torah and in the Injil, in the books of the Jews, in the books of the Christians, in the books of the Pharisees, in the books of the Hindus, in the books of the Buddhists. He's in the Dhammapada. When Buddha says, how do I praise the one who is of pure gold? How do I praise the one that even the Creator praises? Thomas Cleary in his translation of that said, the final messenger, and this is from the earliest Sanskrit Pali manuscript of the Buddha, he says that the last and final prophet is whose name means the praiseworthy one. Every prophet who has come spoke of this star, who when he appeared, everything would be arrighted because he is the qutb of existence, he is the hub of existence, and everything revolves around his guidance. The hub, without it, no wheel can move. When you look at the North Star, watch the stars as they move around it. All of them are dependent on that North Star. The North Star is the axis upon which the earth is aligned. The earth is a sign of God. The earth is traveling in an incredible orbit of 66,000 miles per hour. 66,000 miles around the sun, moving at 1,000 miles around itself slightly tilted to 23.5 degrees to give us four seasons without which we couldn't live. He causes the sun to move into the... He causes the day to move into the night and the night to move into the day. Allah has done this for us so that we might live on this planet and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبِن نَجْمِهُمْ يَهْتَدُونَ By stars they are guided. By the stars they are guided. We've forgotten about the heavenly stars. We've forgotten that our Messenger وسلم, said, Ashabi kan nujum. My companions are like stars. Any of them that you follow, you will be guided. We live in a universe. We have stars up there that if you look up at them and watch them throughout the year, you will see patterns that only a creator who is sustaining his existence could place into the heavens. When you see these stars out there, you should know that like the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا أقسم بمواقع النجوم وإنه لقسم لو تعلمون عظيم I swear by the positions of the stars and this is a vast oath if you but knew. Our ulama say مواقع النجوم are the places where the verses of the Qur'an are put and also the places where the stars in the heaven are put because the Qur'an is constellations of meaning. Just like we have suwar in the heavens, the constellations, we have suwar in the earth, which are the chapters of the Qur'an that Allah has given us to guide ourselves by. This is the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given humanity. And He has commanded us to follow that guidance. Now I just want to finish this by saying, when you look up into the heavens, I want you to reflect on one thing here. According to the United States Navigational Guide, the United States Navigational Guide, in other words, a guide that navigators learn how not to go astray when they travel in the earth. There are 51 navigational stars used to guide people in the night. And I will tell you, and this is a true story, I was on a British Airways flight to England from San Francisco and they have a little box that shows you where the plane uh, is at any given time. Now I know that the Great Circle route out of San Francisco were 18 degrees to uh, the northeast and the planes travel by the Great Circle route. Well I noticed that we were just slightly over Denver, Colorado and we should have been in Canada. 
So I called the stewardess and I said, I think we're off course. She said, what? She got really scared. And I said, we should be somewhere over Canada. And we're not. We're, we're over. She ran to the phone and called the captain. Maybe it was hijacked or something. So then she came back to me a few minutes later and said, it's all right, it's all right. He, he explained it to me. And then she left. About five minutes later, she came up to me and she said, the captain wants to see you in the cockpit. <laughs> so I walked up, went through the first class, opened the door, came in. There were two seated, the captain and the co-pilot. And there was a big chair right in the middle. And he said, have a seat. So I'm on a 747, sitting in this chair with the captain and the co-pilot coming from economy class, which is very cramped, and having a better than a first class seat. So I didn't ask for tea or anything, I wasn't going to push it. So he said to me, are you a pilot? And I said, I'm not a pilot. And he said, how did you know we were off course? And I said, because I know the Great Circle route, and I read a little bit about navigation, and I knew that we were off course. We should have been 18 degrees. We were about 65 or 70. He said, you're right. And I'll tell you a little secret. In the wintertime, we don't fly the Great Circle to England. We fly a loxodromic route. And he said, even though it's a longer distance, we get there faster and save fuel because we go into a jet stream. And I thought of the Prophet's dua, what we anna bu'dahu. And lessen the distance of this journey for us. And I realized it wasn't majaz, it was haqiqi. That Allah can actually take a, a direction and, and make it less than another direction because you go into a jet stream. So then we began to talk and he started pulling out all the maps and showing me how they did it and everything. And I was having a wonderful lesson in geography and navigation. And then I said to him, can I ask you something? What do you guys do if all the machines go down and you don't have any navigational tools? At that point, he did a wonderful thing. And I, I thank Allah for this blessing. He turned off all the lights in the cockpit. And suddenly, the glory of the heavens manifests right before our eyes. And he said, we always have the stars. That's what he said to me. We always have the stars. And he said, and most importantly, we always have the North Star, Al Qutb, and the Southern Qutb, Suhail, which is called Canopus, which many people don't know. But Ibn Abbas told us that the Kaaba is aligned to Canopus. The Kaaba is aligned to Canopus. The Kaaba is astronomically aligned to the, the winter and the sun, the, the summer, moon rise and moon set. And it's aligned to cannabis. Now one of the extraordinary things about cannabis is cannabis, which is called Suhail in the Arabic language, is what NASA uses to guide their space satellites. It is the star used by NASA. And this is the point of all of this. 51 navigational stars in their book, out of those 51, 43 still have their Arabic names in their textbooks. 51, 43 are still called by their Arabic names because it is the Arab and the Muslims and the Persians who spent their nights looking at those glorious stars and writing their names down. And they came to the, the Europeans through Latin and out of a respect for the Muslim scholarship, they didn't change their names, they didn't Latinize them. Just like Muslims now in awe of the West, they get a new Western machine and they don't say uh, Hatif, they say Tidifon. Why do they say Tidifon? They have a perfectly good word in Arabic for telephone, Hatif. In fact, Omar had a divine cell phone. Omar was in Medina. He didn't need AT&T. He said, Ya Sariya til Jabal. Sariya, look to the mountain. And his commander, he didn't need to dial anything, 911 or any. He just said, Ya Sariya til Jabal. The people in the masjid said, Omar's gone crazy. Until they came back from Persia and said that they heard Omar's voice over a thousand miles away. That was divine satellite because they have GPS, which is the global positioning system. We have GPS, God's positioning system. You see, really, we have a different understanding. In fact, 
The cell phone is not a sign that we have progressed. It's a sign we've regressed. Because the ancients didn't need telephones. They could send khawatir. And people would wake up. I just want to name a few of these. Al-Shanar. They call it Al-Shanar. Akhir al-Nahar. Al-Akrab. Al-Aqrab. Adara. Al-Adara. Al-Dabiran. Al-Dabaran. Al-Yuth. Al-Yath. Al-Ka'id. Al-Qa'id. Al-Nilam. Al-Nidam. Al-Fard. Al-Fakka. Al-Farat. Al-Faras. Al-Tayr. Al-Tayr. Betel juice. When I first saw that, I said, Betel juice. What's that mean? Ibtul jawza. Denab. Zenab. Denabola. Denab al Asad. Difda. Dufda. Al net. Al nat. Al tanin. Al tanin. Fum al hot. I thought this a German name, this. I looked it up. It said Fum al hot. It sounded German to me. Excuse me, Dr. Omar. It sounded German to me, and then I looked it up in the dictionary. It was Femelhut, the mouth of Pisces. This is what, and there are 43 of them. This is what they call them to this day. Do you think this is a coincidence? That the stars have names that the Muslims gave them? The heavens belong to the Muslims. The heavens belong to the Muslims. And I want to tell you something that I realized recently. If you want to know who's ruling the world, look who is most advanced in astronomy. Because that is a clear indication of the rulers of the world. And you can see it with the Babylonians, with the Indians, with the Chinese, with the Greeks, with the Muslims, with the Europeans, and now with the Americans. Don't think that the billions of dollars they're spending in NASA, with the billions of dollars they're spending on Hubble telescopes like Fir'aun, like the Pharaoh who wanted to see up in the heavens to see where this God was. You don't, what do you think they're looking for when they look up into the heavens? They're looking for material proof of what they fear. That this universe has a beginning, that it had a beginner, that it had a creator. This is what they're concerned about. And this is what they're finding out. Because every time they look in there, it just gets more and more vast. وَإِنُّهُ لَقَسْمٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمٌ عَظِيمٌ The places that we position the stars, now they know they're millions of light years away. They're millions of light years away. We see a constellation that looks like it's all in the same place. It's millions of light years away. This is what they're concerned about. Now, how does this translate to the earth? In the oracle of Delphi, which was the Greek source of wisdom, there was written over that oracle, as above, so below. In other words, the order of the heaven must be brought down to earth. How is that done? If you look in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Rahman that He raised up the heavens. And then, وَضَعَ mizan. He placed this balance. And then He placed the earth for all living creatures. So between the heavens and the earth is the mizan. What is the mizan other than justice? And where does justice emanate other than the marketplace? Because it is the marketplace that gave us justice. We live in a world immersed in usury, a world immersed in economic injustice, and everywhere you look and see economic suffering, the root cause is usury. And Allah has prohibited from people, He's given us a mizan, and He gave us iron, to establish the mizan. He gave us hadid. He gave us iron and told us, Fihi ba'sun shadid wa manafi'u nas that in it is much fierceness and great benefit for humanity. Wa anzalna al hadid. Look up in the Encyclopedia Britannica. They say that iron came from meteorites from the heavens. The source of iron is the heavens itself. The source of justice is heavens. The source of the sword of justice is the heaven. The source of the mizan is from heaven. Everything comes from heaven. Order is from heaven. Go out tonight, look up into that sky, and the few stars that they can't put out are still up there. Look up and know that those stars have a Lord, and that Lord has a divine order, and He has commanded His creation to look to the heavens for guidance, 
materially and physically, just spiritually, just as we look to the heavens to guide our paths on this earth. Like the pilot who said, we always have the stars, only they've forgotten because they're depending on their machinery to guide them. And yet, their global positioning system is still dependent on satellites that they put into the heavens because there is no guidance, neither material nor spiritual, except that it comes from the heavens. And this is what humanity has forgotten. And this is why you're here to remind people, to remind people of where guidance comes from. This is why we're here. Lest we forget, lest we forget, lest we forget. This is why we're here. So people go out with hearts that are as vast or more vast than the heavens. Hearts that be, contain belief in Allah. وَسِعَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Kursiuhu, His throne, his pedestal is greater than the heavens and the earth. Without any anthropomorphism, any tajseem, his throne and his pedestal are greater than the heavens and the earth. This is the iman of the believer. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah to make us people who are guided by the stars, guided by the sahaba, guided by the nijm, guided by the greatest star, by the qutb of existence, by our beloved Prophet sallallahu and by the people who he's left behind for us as guides on this earth. Al-ulama warathatul anbiya. We're here to honor these people. We're here to honor Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya, Sheikh Khalid al Madkur, Sheikh Tawfiq Ramadan, Sheikh Nidham al Yaqubi, all of these people that have come, Dr. Omar Abdullah Farooq, Sheikh Muhammad al Yaqubi. Hafidhuhum Allah Jameen. We've come to honor them and restore their place because these are the people that will give us balance again. These are the mountains and these are the people that will give security to the earth once again. If we turn away from them, we've turned away from our source of security. And this is why Imam al Busiri reminds us, لا نخشى الضلالة بعدك وفينا ورث نور هتك العلماء. We don't fear going astray as long as we have the inheritors of the light of your guidance, our scholars. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي وراكم ورسائر المسلمين. And I also hope we haven't mentioned Al Quds tonight, but let us remember the tribulations of the people of Palestine. That the tyranny and terror that they're living under. Let us pray for them tonight and each night. Let us pray for them. Really, raise our hands with to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Let us pray for the people of Iraq who are suffering. Let us pray for the people of Kashmir and let us pray for these people here in this country who are also suffering, who need guidance, who've been stripped of their humanity, who are walking around naked. Animals given fur to cover their their bashara, but we were not given fur in order to elevate us, and so Allah replaced our fur with clothes that we make from our hands because we are human beings.